and he's asked himself how it could be that at the same moment, a stick in Syene would cast no shadow and a stick in Alexandria, 800 kilometers to the north, would cast a very definite shadow. The sun, in general, gets lower and lower in the sky as you travel away from the equator, and you can use this to directly measure the Earth's curvature. Pick two places a few hundred miles directly north and south of each other, and at noon, measure the shadows cast by a vertical meter stick at each location. You can use the shadow lengths to figure out the angle between the sticks, and once you add in how far apart they are, you can calculate the Earth's curvature. Here's a uh, map of ancient Egypt. I've inserted two sticks, or obelisks, one up here in Alexandria and one down here in Syene. Now, if at a certain moment each stick casts no shadow, no shadow at all, that's perfectly easy to understand, provided the Earth is flat. If the shadow at Syene is at a certain length and the shadow at Alexandria is the same length, that also makes sense on a flat Earth. But how could it be, Eratosthenes asked, that at the same instant there was no shadow at Syene and a very substantial shadow at Alexandria? The only answer was that the surface of the Earth is curved. Now, 800 kilometers times 50 is 40,000 kilometers. So that must be the circumference of the Earth. That's how far it is to go once around the Earth. Up in the smoke, that's where my money goes. In my lungs, and sometimes up my nose. When troubled times begin to bother me, I take a tote and all my cares go up in smoke. 